today the feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist, the precursor of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the epistle of the the epistle for the feast of the beheading, or rather, we'll simply read the gospel. No, the we we'll both the epistle for the feast of the beheading of Saint John the Baptist, it's August 29th, taken from Saint the Book of Jeremiah, the Old Testament, chapter one. In those days, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, "Gird up your loins and arise and speak to Judah, all that I command you. Be not afraid in their presence, for I will make you not to fear in their countenance." For behold, I made you this day a fortified city, and a pillar of iron, and a wall of brass, over all the land of the kings of Judah, to the princes thereof, and to the priests, and to the people of the land. They shall fight against you, and shall not prevail. For I am with you always, I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. In the Gospel. Amen. And taken John, and bound him in prison, because of Herodias, his brothers, his brother, Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. But Herodias laid snares for him, and would have liked to put him to death. But when he heard him to will, I will put to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you, even though it be half the half of my king, the Baptist. When she came in at once, grieved as he was, the king, because of his oath, and his guests, was unwilling to displease her. But seeing an executioner, he commanded that his head be brought on a dish. When he beheaded him, in the, then he beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head on a dish, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. The disciples hearing that came and took away his body, and laid it in a tomb. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. The consideration of the envy of Herodias and that the duty of a priest of God, the duty of the bishop, the duty of the church is, of course, to preach the faith, preach the true faith. But it must be remembered that the man of God is not only to preach that which is true. It is his duty also to preach that which is good. It is not enough to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in all the truths of the Holy Mother Church. I believe in the 12 articles of the Creed. Because the, the priests and prophet, they are to the, like the police officers of God. And it is not the duty of the police officer to walk down the street, like they tell me the New Jersey cops do, and they sit in their car, look out the car, and say, uh, you're speeding. That's against section 209-4. Uh, you just murdered that girl. That's against section 201-3. Uh, you just robbed a bank. That's against section 403-7. Don't you know that's wrong? And then take a nap. It is not the duty of the priest of God, nor is the duty of the bishop of God, to simply say, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to believe. But it is the duty of the priest and bishop of God and the prophet to say to condemn the actual sins of the sinner. And to say to the king, for instance, it is a duty, for instance, of the Catholic bishops of the United States to excommunicate every single Catholic politician and every single Catholic judge and every single Catholic official who is involved in abortion and the approbation of abortion. And the same with other immoral laws. It is not sufficient to say you must be a good, you must believe what the church teaches. The Third Council of Baltimore in 1883, 1884, somewhere in that time, declared an excommunication for any Catholic parent who did not put their children into Catholic schools. And why did they do that? Because they recognized that parents were having, Catholic parents were having Catholic children. And when they did not put them into Catholic schools, built for them throughout the West of the United States. They lost their faith. 
And therefore, it was not enough to say on Sunday sermons, you need to believe the faith. And on Sunday sermons, you need to be a good Catholic. It was necessary to say, you parents in this parish, you must put your children in Catholic schools. And if you don't put your children in Catholic schools, you are excommunicated. This is excommunication only for the United States. It's not an excommunication in the Universal Court of Canadian Law. It was an excommunication made for the United States by the bishops, specifically because their people were losing the faith because they were not educating their children in the faith, and their children were even going to Protestant schools and Protestant churches and losing the faith. John the Baptist is a great preacher, St. John the Baptist, who prepared Jesus Christ. But he didn't just simply say, He is the Messiah, follow him. He also said to the king Herod, Herod, Herodias is not your wife. He did not simply say that one should not have second wives. One should not take their brother's wife. He said, he said Herod, you took your brother's wife. She is the wife of Philip. She is not your wife. Therefore, you must put her aside and she must go back to her husband. And Herod recognized, St. John, what you're saying is true. But he didn't do it. But Herodias was filled with great anger. And she wanted St. John dead. And because St. John the Baptist preached against the immoral, public immoral activity of the king, he was put to death. And it is to be noted that we must not only, as prophets of God, priests of God, bishops of God, in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, especially the Holy Father, preach that Jesus Christ is God, and preach that you must belong to the true religion and reject all false religions, it is also necessary to condemn egregious public sin. This is what St. John Chrysostom had to deal with. He had the very wicked Theodora, and Theodora, and she was, she was, I mean, Eudoxia, and she was bringing about great terror to the Catholic people. She was, she was torturing them, giving, taking, uh, doing great evil to the poor, and doing continuous evil throughout the, 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 the kingdom of Constantinople, and St. John Chrysostom said, Eudoxia, you are evil. Eudoxia, correct yourself. Because it is the duty of the church to be as police officers, and not only as teachers of catechism, that it is necessary for the Catholic priest, and the Catholic bishop, and the Catholic pope, to stand up against the evils of the day and to prevent the evils going on. In 1914, St. Pius X foresaw that World War I was about to break out, and that millions and millions of people were going to die, and there was going to be a terrible war, the most bloody war in history up until that moment. What did he do as a Holy Father? He reached out to the kingdoms and he said, let us avoid this war. We can't avoid this war. Let us not bring about the great death and the destruction that's going to happen for an evil purpose. I can bring peace. Come around the table with the Holy Father, and we will gather peace, and we will make peace instead of war. They did not listen to him. The war broke out, and St. Pius X, the lover of all souls, died of a broken heart in August of 1914. Just after the October 1914, just after the war had begun, only a few months. Because the bishop of the church, and the priest of the church, and the prophet of God, he is meant to be a prophet for his age, a prophet for his times. We are meant to be prophets for our times. We have to tell the souls, for instance, of our times, you commit a grave sin and you should be excommunicated if you vote for Hillary Clinton. If you vote for Joe Biden, who doesn't even know he's running for president. The fact is, these things are grave sins and they're grave offenses. And we cannot simply say, generic things. We have to recognize that there are grave sins happening in our times. And St. John the Baptist, maybe he would not have been martyred. If only he had not criticized Herodias. And so it is necessary in our times to criticize the wickedness of wicked nations, the evil that is going on in the world, the, the laws of our countries that are bringing in immorality everywhere throughout the world. The approbation of abortion, the approbation of, of uh, the gay marriages, the, appro the, the approbation of divorce at any cost, breaking up of the true marriages, the wickedness of the laws of the countries must be condemned by the Catholic Church. They must be condemned by the Catholic bishop. The bishop must stand up. 
St. Basil, in his old age, stood up against the Arian king. He said, you are an old man. And he said, you follow the law of God. Stand with God and stand against the heresies or I will excommunicate you. And the king was shaken. And he said to St. Basil, but St. Basil was noted for his gentleness, noted for his kindness. He is the one who used to love to sing. Great, beautiful singer of St. Basil, famous for his singing. And St. Basil was a gentle and kind bishop. And he was very old and feeble. He had to lean on his crozier. And he said, you will not follow the laws of the devil. You will not go the way of the devil. I will excommunicate you. I will throw you out of the church. I ban you from coming to the church. St. Ambrose did the same thing with the heretics. And the king came to St. Basil and said, you are, you seem like such a frail old man, but you are very powerful and you scare me. And St. Basil said, now you see the power of the bishop of the church. Go and do your duty. Because he had no power as a frail old man, but as the altar Christus, with the highest priesthood, as the representative of our Lord Jesus Christ and his divine truth, as a chief of the diocese in the name of the Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, he is not only to preach the truth, but he is to protect the poor, to protect the widows and the orphans, to protect those that are being abused by the enemies of the world. That's why enemies of Christ. That's why, for instance, the bishops who have not executed, burnt at the stake, and taken proper provisions against those wicked priests, those wicked priests guilty of the sin of pedophilia, St. Pius V, Bishop of the Church, he said that priests are found with this grave sin, and they are serious in this sin, and they have committed this sin most completely and wickedly. Let them be put to death. That's what St. Pius V commanded. They must be put to death. And so that there must be a, not only must there be a preaching against errors and heresies in general, or even the errors and heresies of our times, there must be also in the Church the condemnation of the great wicked ones of our age. It is not for us to condemn everyone. It is not normal for us to condemn every wicked man. But the great wicked men of our age, the ones that are pushing evil, they must be condemned. And they must be brought to repentance. Like St. Gregory the Seventh, imitating St. John the Baptist, he told Frederick the Second, you are an enemy of God. You are the emperor but you are attacking the church, you are very impure, you are taking care of wickedness, you're being wicked to the poor, and therefore I tell all the people of Germany and all the people of the whole Roman Empire, do not obey Frederick II. I declare you excommunicated, and I tell the people, don't do what you say. When you tell the cook to make for you a chicken, he will not do it. When you tell them to wash your clothes, they are not to do it. I release them of all obedience to you until you repent. And Frederick had to leave his empire and stand in the snow for three days in front of St. Gregory VII, barefoot, to prove to Gregory VII that he was sorry for his sin. And hence we must recognize it is a duty of the prophet. It is a great sin of the bishops today that they are not condemning abortion. They are not condemning the, 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 the politicians. Nancy Pelosi is supposed to be a Catholic. She should be excommunicated before she gets a chance to die and go to hell. She should be excommunicated. It would be made very clear that no Catholic can follow the example of such a wicked woman. The same is true of the other so-called Catholic politicians. It is a duty of the Bishop of New York to blast them. The duty of the Bishop of Washington, D.C. and the Bishop of Denver and the Bishop of all the dioceses where there is a great evil going in their dioceses to defend the poor and the widow, the wicked uh, and, and the and the the widows and the orphans, and to stand up for the rights of Holy Mother Church, and to condemn the enemies of God, and to defend the innocent priests, and to crush and destroy the guilty priests. And therefore the priest of God, the bishop of God, must be as St. John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was very offensive. And it's interesting also how St. John the Baptist, he was not put to death because he denied, or he told Herod that he was a heretic, he was put to death because he condemned the impurity of Herod. And his wife couldn't take it. And so it is in our Holy Mother of the Church. This must be done in our times as well. Let's pray for bishops of the Church 
who will not just simply make dissertations, but bishops of the church and the pope to repent, who will obey Our Lady of Fatima, consecrate Russia to the back heart of Mary, and stand up in his duty as the holy bishop of Rome to condemn the brave, wicked ones of our age to stand in the defense of the innocent and to be ready to die for his sheep. For the shepherd loves his sheep, and the shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And the sheep are the sheep of the shepherd. And the shepherd must love his sheep, must lay down his life for his sheep, must defend his sheep, and this is not happening in our age. It is a duty of the prophet to, to imitate St. John the Baptist. Now what happens? St. John the Baptist was beheaded. Did this harm the truth? Or he wasn't able to speak it anymore. St. John the Baptist was no longer able to preach after his head was cut off. But what happened? When his head was cut off, there was another head that spoke. And it is the head of the church, the invisible head of the church, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He spoke in his own mouth. Jesus Christ took the place of John the Baptist. And what did he say? Behold, a greater than John the Baptist here. So when St. John the Baptist died, truth did not die. When St. John the Baptist's head was chopped off, the speaking of the truth was not, did not cease. And look at all the saints down the last 2,000 years. So many have been put to death because they preached the truth. And they were put to death like Herodias put them to death, so that they were put to death that the truth might be stopped. Was the truth stopped? Absolutely not. When one saint is put to death, God raises up another. When one prophet is killed, God raises another. And then just like the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians, the blood of prophets is the seed of prophets. And therefore, the blood of the prophet is the most glorious thing. And the priest and the bishop that preaches the word of God, these bishops that are not doing their duty in our times, preach the word of God. Yes, they must do that, but there must be a condemnation of the great wicked ones like St. John the Baptist did. And this is not happening among the bishops of our holy church. They must repent of their failure to perform their duty to defend the holy flock against the wicked wolves that are striving to destroy that flock. They flee, mainly because the Lord Jesus Christ says they are hirelings. There are some bishops that are wicked wolves, but the majority of bishops are simply hirelings. They don't want to destroy their sheep. They don't want them all to die. They don't want bad things to happen, but they are afraid to die. They are just working for a paycheck. And they're not willing to jeopardize their life that their sheep might be saved. And hence, when the wolf comes, they flee. And we must pray to the Lord of the harvest that there be shepherds entering the harvest, priests and bishops of the church in our time, and especially the holy bishop of Rome, who right now is not fulfilling his duty. Pope Francis is not fulfilling his duty. That pray for the holy bishop of Rome to fulfill his duty and to imitate St. John the Baptist and speak out in the divine truth, point the way to our Lord Jesus Christ, and condemn the great wicked ones of our age in the name of Christ. Who's going to bless you all? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.